We're in this beautiful Christmas setup, and guess where we are, guys? We're here with <gasps> Bye -bye. Bye -bye. What's up, Team MDL? It's Music by Lucas. And Lauren. And today, guys, we are here in the headquarters, in the HQ headquarters. Quintina. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> He's got some awesome things happening, right? Really? Or, okay, well, well tell us. I hope so. We're starting the new year off in January, collab with Hardwell, a new one. February, my new release on Spinning Solo. Then in March, I got a new collab with Steve Aoki. Also in March, my new Go Harder EP, Five Records. And, and also on the EP, uh, we tried to do something new. So we had a talent pool and we picked out the best record we liked. Uh, recreated, uh, we, we give our own sauce onto it. So. Uh, and we made it a collab, it's on the EP. From all the records we listened to, we, we found one and we, we put it on the EP. So, you guys, keep working hard if you're a Quintino fan, yeah. he pays attention to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Th that's how people help me too. In the now it's time for the moment you've huh? all been waiting for. What we like to do when we start an interview is to ask an icebreaker question. It's a random question that I'm going to pull out of this random box. <laughs> She's cheating, she's cheating. <laughs> Make it up. In your opinion, what is the most beautiful man-made object in the world? Computer. He's got something deep here. <laughs> Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. And all the good ideas came with drinking a little beer. Yes. When did you start producing and why do you love producing? I don't know. No, no. I'm from a city in Holland. It's maybe like 50,000 people. Mm. So that's really small. And I was the only one playing dance music because it was like hard style and like commercial, of course. So I started doing my own parties for like 100 people. <laughs> Maybe 10 people showed up, they were my friends. Yeah. <laughs> and then Leibach Luke uh, uh, was playing over there at that same party. Uh, he got booked. And I was playing after him and he stayed behind me for a long time. And just watching, I was DJing. Uh, and I was like, okay, he's still there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, was, I was just doing what I always do and, and I love it. And uh, after the show, he came up to me, he's like, yo, I stayed here, I really loved your set. Let's keep in contact, uh, uh, maybe I can help you with some small stuff. Wow. I was like, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> we see the light, like, ah. And that also means that you must be a really good DJ too, because Layback Luke, he's all about like yeah. classical DJs. Th that's so. what you like, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I played everything, all genres, like from Dutch music to art style to commercial, yeah. uh, because the club wanted that. That changed my uh, opinion of playing dance music. I always switch out to, Play a retro chili uh, pepper song or uh, do something of uh, NERD in it. Uh, yeah. Or like, uh, I like to switch up, and now I made a new record I just showed you guys yeah. that nobody knows yet. Nobody knows me. But I try to connect everything because everything is music. It's not only dance music, Avicii did it with country. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. and that's because I played all this different kind of music. Uh, it makes me more diverse. That's what I think. It keeps you excited to play because if, if you just play the, the regular songs you make and you always go for the obvious. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we get bored. So it's always a new game for me. Every, every, every set is like a game to make the people create a memory and a set they never heard before. Yeah, and, and that's the only thing I'm standing for is like no boundaries, whatever. No boundaries. Yeah. You guys here. What do you think it was that you did that made Blade Luke even look at you? I think I know. <laughs> Because I was always playing the eight hour sets that I didn't like, I had to play everything, but I was happy the mixing was getting really well, four, hour, four nights a week. Uh, and then when I finally had a dance night, I was so, it was so easy for me to play one hour. I had to, all the records I wanted to play, I had to put in, so I, I mashed up every mm -hmm. day. So I was like fully in my element for one hour. It was easy for me one hour, because if you used to play eight hours, so I was, really in my zone for one hour and he was like, yo, this is like amazing if it's your first time, whatever. Mm -hmm. It was meant to be. Yeah, for me it was really awesome, yeah, yeah. I couldn't sleep that night, I remember, because he was t talking to me. I and bet. And then uh, I gave him my number and then, uh, I, I don't know, I just didn't sleep. Well, how do you think from then to now music has changed? Uh, back in the days there weren't a lot of DJs, there weren't a lot of producers. Back in the days, the people, especially young kids, they wanted to play soccer or mm -hmm. like they want to be uh, sports good players. in sports. Yeah. And now all my small nephews, all the young kids I know want to be a DJ. Want to be a DJ, yeah. so want to be a YouTuber, want to yeah. be something social. And, and yeah. it's really dope because in the beginning there wasn't a lot of, there wasn't enough artists to break through the whole world. Uh, and then Calvin Harris, Geta, everybody came. Absolutely. And then it created more space for the young kids to evolve and, and be a DJ and play all over the world. Electronic music is everything combined and sometimes you make a little bit of this, you make of that. But if you're happy with your own set, it doesn't matter how you call your music. Absolutely. They come for you. And, for and you is you. And yeah. it's not you are not future house, you are not bass house. You are you. You is you is Skrillex, you is Diplo. Skrillex used to be dubstep, now he's not dubstep right, anymore. No one it's cares, Skrillex. Right? Exactly. Skrillex. Yeah, you come Absolutely. for the artist. So 
I don't care about something is alive or dead. It's just the artist. You like him or you don't like him. What's your favorite part about like performing at a show? Like, what is the best? Like, ah, oh, this is why I do it. The oh, one my. minute before I start my show, because I'm never nervous. <laughs> yeah. But I'm so excited. You're hyped. Like, the one moment before, everything goes through my mind. Like, I want to switch into. Oh, I'm gonna this. I'm, I'm gonna mix this and. And it's so fast because I cut away like like a little kid. <laughs> if you're walking to a big stadium, hundred thousand people, and you can score a goal that moment before, right? You think, uh, you're thinking about it. Yeah, the World Cup. The moment before, <laughs> I just sit sit uh, like I close my eyes always, and I just think about what's gonna happen because this the, the one hour or ninety minutes or two hours. That's the moment you all live up to. The right. Fourteen hour drive the goal. or the fourteen hour flight yeah. or whatever. It's, it all comes up to that moment, to that moment. and it's my most favorite time. How do you prepare for each show individually? Is there, you know, like, because obviously you know the crowds now, because you've yeah. been there so many times. Do yeah. you specifically cater each set to those crowds? Yeah, I don't, I prepare uh, before I go on, on the road, like for example, with two weeks Asia run. It's a little bit different than maybe America or Europe, mm -hmm. uh, but small stuff. It's my own music, but the way I do mashups, or uh, it depends on the country. Asia has more melodies and America has more hip hop. <laughs> All your years of doing this, you've you know obviously have some knowledge. Any advice Just for anybody else pursuing this career? There's a lot of uh, things you have to do or don't do. Um, and but it's it's really difficult. It depends on which artist. But nowadays there's so many artists that make music. So Ronaldo is the best soccer player because he practices every day. Right. And he, he's Messi is the biggest talent, and he has the talent. And some people have the talent, and it's a little bit more easier than and then someone that needs to work a little bit harder. Right. If you have the confidence to really do this. It's 24/7, but yes, it, it doesn't feel like work. But if you're not on it 24/7, it's, it's maybe it's not for you. It's a hobby. But if it's your life, then it's 24/7, and you don't see it as work. See it as work. That's 100% true. Yeah, but I love it. I don't care. I'm here in the studio all day. T uh, tomorrow we go to a different city. Uh, Friday, Saturday, different city, and Sunday, Monday we're back in the studio. Well, but I don't think about it as work. We came here. We're all friends. We make music. Yeah. Uh, with downstairs we have other artists. You're having a good time. Yeah, it's what I love. All right, so we have some questions from our producers team for you, and we have a guy yeah. named Outburst out there. He's a huge fan, and he some wants outburst. to know. There you go. <laughs> he wants to know which genre that you produce do you enjoy producing the most? For me, what I enjoy the most is the genre I don't know. <laughs> so yesterday we were in the studio with a Dutch singer, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, he used to sing Dutch the whole time, and now we did like the Jamaican rap kind of vibe-ish on, on a, a trap record. Mm -hmm. And it was something new we never did. And I'm so excited to, to be making that. And it yes. worked out. We're like, yeah. Yeah, it goes together. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's like the, the, the unknown. It all falls Always the place. unknown is the best. One of the questions we had was, what are your tips for promoting your own music? Like for these kids out there, like what should they do if they want to promote Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, promoting is a different thing. Um, the, the artists are really easy to uh, connect to. Um, they have like a website, Facebook, Instagram, uh, everything. Uh, just keep out sending demos and if there's only one artist that plays your record and it's good enough the other artist always check out the other artist it's like a snowball effect it's like an unknown rule yeah. we all check out each other's set I check out Hardwell's set I check out Afrojack set the yeah. Diplo set and, and they check out my set yeah. just to see if there's maybe a record or an influence you like or a mashup so keep sending 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 everybody until one catches it and then plays it and then plays it plays it and then it's like snowball. That is actually true. Never give up. You got to keep trying. Yeah. As soon as one person does it, you're going to be able to say, so and so did it. Can you do it? And then there'll be more and more people. You yeah. get a bigger list. You got it. All right. Thank you so much, Quintino, for being here. This was doing awesome. this interview with us. It was so much fun. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you loved Quintino. <laughs> and remember, it's all about teamwork. We got new videos every Wednesday and Friday. So if you're not a member of the team yet, be like Quintino and hit that subscribe button. Bye. 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 <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.